السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah bless them all and bless every one of us Grant us goodness, grant us ease And may Allah سبحانه وتعالى have mercy upon our offspring Those to come right up to the end Brothers and sisters, we're talking of supplications from Revelation and I want to make mention of a powerful supplication in Surat Ala Imran that Allah makes mention of people who fought with the Prophet peace be upon him against the enemy and they made a specific dua or the prophets of Allah against their enemies and they made a specific dua. Allah says, you know what? We gave them the goodness of this world as well as the next. And Allah says, I love those who do good. So what is that supplication? رَبَّنَا غُفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ What a powerful dua. O oh, our Rabb, forgive our sins and forgive our excessiveness in our affair. You know, uh, if we have gone wrong, if we have done something, uh, Israf is normally connected to that which is excessive, uh, here we're asking for forgiveness for that which was excessive in our affairs and you know strengthen our feet make them firm make firm our feet and that is generally connected to not giving up help us not to give up you're asking Allah saying oh Allah help me to remain firm so I don't give up you know it's easy to give up sometimes when Allah tests you with challenges things happen uh, we endure for a year for a while then we give up the dua is وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا Oh Allah, strengthen our feet, you know, grant them the, the proper position, unshakable. ثَبِّتْ ثَبَاتْ We're talking of making it firm. So uh, this dua, رَبَّنَا اِغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا Forgive our sins. That's the first thing always. وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا And the excessiveness, whatever, what the, our faults in this affair of ours, in, the, in this matter of ours, وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And make firm our feet and grant us victory over the, the disbelievers. Allah says, فَآتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ ثَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا وَحُسْنَ ثَوَابِ الْآخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We gave them uh, the reward of this world and the best of the hereafter in terms of reward. And indeed, Allah loves those who believe. So my brothers and sisters, that's also a beautiful supplication that we should be adding to our list of supplications that we should be calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. Uh, I think a lot of us have so many challenges, so many problems, people we consider jealous, envious, etc. People who might have harmed us, who may intend to harm us. It's interesting to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then my brothers and sisters, there is another powerful dua also in Surat Ala Imran where towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the creation of the heavens and the, the earth and how important it is to ponder over the creation and to uh, say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my Lord, you have not created all of this in vain. So it is an act of worship to look at the creation of Allah. When you see nature, when you see the creatures of Allah, the sun, the moon, the stars, the skies, the plants, the different types of creatures, the, the, the sea, you know, the water, Everything you need to ponder over it, even within yourself. You need to ponder over what Allah has blessed you with. You know, the eyesight we have, everything we have, a gift of Allah. If you ponder over it, you realize the greatness of Allah. So to declare that greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would be achieving closeness to Allah. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, you have not created all of this in vain, without purpose. So therefore, O oh Allah, save us from the fire of the punishment. Sorry, the punishment of the fire. Save us from the punishment of the fire, the fire of the hereafter, the grave. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ What a powerful dua mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing because we are looking at the greatness of Allah and realizing how small we are, how insignificant we are in comparison to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Oh Allah, all of this is not created without purpose, you know, for nothing, just as a play, just as a pastime. No, oh Allah, this is massive creation of yours. 
ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك glory be to you O oh Allah the glory is owned by you deserved by you you are the owner of it so glory be unto you O oh Allah فقنا عذاب النار so save us from عذاب the punishment of the fire uh, that, that's the beginning of these uh, verses verse number 191 of Surat Ala Imran. And then we have verse number 193 as well, where we have a verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the people call out to Allah with those who truly ponder over the creation of Allah. رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي لِلْإِيمَانِ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِرَبِّكُمْ فَآمَنَّا رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ It's made up of an introduction and then a question to Allah, request to Allah. The introduction is, O oh my Rabb, O oh our Rabb. And you know the term Rabb actually refers to the Creator, the one who's in absolute control, the one who provides, the one who cures and so on. So, O oh our Rabb, we have heard a caller calling out towards Iman, towards belief, to believe in your Rabb. So we believed. So we heard a caller calling out towards believing in you. So we believed in you. Therefore, Wow. Therefore, forgive us, forgive our sins and expiate the sins that we've committed. اغفر لنا ذنوبنا Forgive our sins. وكفر عنا سيئاتنا And our bad deeds, we want you to compensate. We want you to actually atone them for us. We want you to forgive us uh, the bad deeds that we've done by replacing them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then says, that they would say وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ abrar and grant us death with the righteous or resurrect us with the righteous. You know, to be granted death and to be resurrected with the righteous. So when we die, let's die in a good condition, in the right company, with the right people. And when we are resurrected, let us be resurrected in the good company, with the right people. What a powerful dua. It shows how deep the thinking is. It shows how deep the iman is. Brothers and sisters, when you call out to Allah, it's a reflection of your faith in Allah. It's a reflection of your conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are convinced. You have a powerful belief. You are worried about so many things of the future. Maybe worry is the wrong word, but you are concerned about the future. Concerned. Uh, when you have the concern, it makes you prepare for it. So you start asking Allah, you start working towards it, and you start calling out to Allah constantly, Oh Allah, forgive me, make it easy for me in my grave. Look at this. Oh Allah, forgive us, grant us a good death and a good resurrection. And we are saying uh, thereafter, رَبَّنَا وَآتِنَا مَا وَعَدْتَنَا عَلَىٰ رُسُولِكَ وَلَا تُخْزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّكَ لَا تُخْلِفُ الْمِيْعَادَ this is beautiful. O oh, our Rabb, grant us what you have promised us with your prophets. Your prophets told us certain things. We believed it, we believe it. We are convinced about it and grant it to us. And O oh Allah, uh, don't embarrass us on the day of judgment. We know indeed, we believe, we have faith that you do not go against your appointed time and your promise. We know that. We have conviction. So this is the dua, these are the verses of Surah Al-Imran 194 as well as 193. Uh, from this we learn that when the prophets came to promise us things, Allah will deliver the goods and He says, you can ask me about it, you can question me. You can say, oh Allah, we heard the prophet say this, uh, we believed in it. Uh, the prophet says, whoever seeks forgiveness will be forgiven. We sought the forgiveness, oh Allah, forgive us. We know that you won't break your promise. We know that when you have an appointed time uh, and something you've promised, you're not going to falter at all. So this is conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And oh Allah, don't embarrass us on the day of judgment. What is the embarrassment of the day of judgment? It is connected to exposing our deeds on the day of judgment in front of everyone for them to see what exactly we did and what we didn't. May Allah forgive us. If Allah has covered us in this world, He will cover us in the hereafter. But there is a way of achieving that cover. Learn to cover the mistakes of others. Don't expose them in a derogatory way to try and insult, to try and belittle 
If you'd like to correct someone, it doesn't mean you need to expose them. You need to talk to them, communicate with them, try your best to uh, correct them in the most uh, decent and reasonable way. The hadith says, Man satara musliman satarahu Allahu fi dunya wal akhirah. Whoever covers the faults of a believer, Allah will cover their faults in this world and the next. So if you want to be exposed, it's quite simple. Just start exposing everyone else. A day will come when you shall be exposed as well. That is something we don't want. So this is why we say, وَلَا تُخْزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Oh Allah, uh, do not embarrass us or expose us, disgrace us on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the goodness that we are searching for. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with every form of cover when it comes to the sins that we have committed. And may we be from among those who have earned or sought the forgiveness and changed our lives. So my brothers and sisters, uh, we look at more of the supplications that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us through this Quran uh, that comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Here is mention of the people of the book, some of the rabbis. According to some Mufassirin, it speaks about the negus of Abyssinia, and Najashi, where when Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu read verses of the Quran in front of him, he cried and he said a few things. So some of the Mufassirin say these verses were revealed uh, regarding the Najashi. And these are verses of Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 83. When they heard the verses, that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you saw their eyes fill up with tears because of the truth that they recognized in those verses. I want to pause. You and I are Muslimin. How many of us cry when we hear the verses of Allah? Question. Why? The answer is no, we don't. Why? Very rarely do we cry. Very rarely. Sometimes we cry at the melody. We don't know what it means. Sometimes we cry because the Imam is crying. We don't know what it means. How many of us are going to continue this way for 60, 70 years without ever having understood the meanings of the words of the Quran and that was your life? We learned the languages we spoke. We went to school. We learned how to read and write. That would help us for a few years. I promise you we spent 60, 70 years on earth to prepare for the hereafter and we never ever made an effort to understand the words of the Quran. We kept on reciting them without understanding them. Yes, there is a great reward for recitation, no doubt. Every letter you get 10 rewards, but there is a similar reward for understanding the Quran. And Allah says in, in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Will they not consider deeply pondering over the verses of the Quran? Will they not Ponder over the verses of the Quran in another place in Surah Sad, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Kitabun anzalnahu mubarakun, kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadakkara ulul albab." This book or a book that is blessed that we have revealed in order for its verses to be pondered over deeply. That's the reason why Allah revealed the book. In order for its verses to be pondered over deeply. How many of us do that? Here is an Najashi. He heard a few verses. He started crying. Here is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He heard a few verses. His whole life changed. Amazing. And here we are. We have the Quran. We are Muslimin. We are making an effort to learn huge books in order to be able to lead the rest of a few years of this life. But we haven't learned the one book that existed with us from the time we were born in the cases of those who were born Muslim. But remember, it's our duty to make an effort to learn, understand, put into practice, ask questions, know how to respond. There are verses uh, you know, that you may know. What is abrogation? What is the explanation? What are the reasons of revelation? This should be a part and parcel of your daily routine, my brothers and sisters. 
And there is so much available online on your phones. There is so much available. You no longer need to go uh, far and wide in order to learn the knowledge. You can actually enroll uh, on some reliable academy site or something that is there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and make us from those who understand. So that was a small diversion because it's absolutely important. But we get back to the dua. The dua of an najashi and the likes, those who were uh, the priests of the, the Christian faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yaqooluna rabbana amanna faktubna ma'ashahideen. They said, O oh our Rabb, we have believed. Rabbana amanna, Allahu Akbar. They have said, O oh our Rabb, we have believed. We have believed. So write our name from amongst those who bore witness. Subhanallah. Write our names from among those who bore witness. We have believed. They heard the verses. They cried and they are saying, Oh Allah, we've believed. So write our name. Some people accept the faith of Islam and they may not be able to announce it to everyone because of circumstances they are in. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's the community. Sometimes where you're living. It's not so easy sometimes to announce that you're a Muslim. But Allah knows, you know. So you need to say, Rabbana amanna faktubna ma'ash shahideen. Oh Allah, we have believed. So write our name from amongst those who have believed, who have uh, born witness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand and realize. Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, that is uh, an najashi and the likes, the people who uh, from, from the Christians who have learnt the Quran or read it or heard about it and cried and believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says what He gave them in return. <laughs> wow. They cried at the verses of Allah and they said, Oh Allah, we believe. If you cry at the verses of Allah and you say, Oh Allah, we've believed, so write us from among those who bear witness. Listen to what Allah gives you. فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Verse number 85 of the same surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah says, so we gave them a reward because of what they said. فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا We gave them a reward because of what they said. What was the reward? Jannatin, the gardens of paradise. They were granted entry into paradise. Uh, gardens beneath which rivers were flowing forever and ever. And that is the recompense. That is the reward that we give those who do good. Amazing how to utter words. Obviously, you need to be sincere, but to utter these words, your tongue bears witness, your lips bear witness, your faculties bear witness, your teeth bear witness, your voice box bears witness, and everything bears witness that you uttered the good words. And all you needed to do is make sure it was from your heart. And the tears here prove that it's definitely sincere. So Allah says, they, they cried when they heard the revelation. It was supposed to have impacted upon them and it did impact upon them. And then they said, oh Allah, we love you so much. We believe in you. Forgive us. Write us from among those who bear witness. And so Allah says, not only did we write them from among those who bear witness, but we wrote them from among those who are granted entry into paradise beneath which there are rivers flowing forever and ever. And that's the way we reward those who do good. Aren't we inspired to do a little bit of good, my brothers and sisters, in a beautiful season of this nature? When we do good, subhanAllah, the Almighty will indeed reward us wholesomely and handsomely. Uh, and this is why there are other prayers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of also uh, regarding uh, others. And there is a lesson from every single prayer. Everyone's dua, there is a lesson. Let's listen to this. Uh, the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam, when he was sent to his people, certain things happened. And it's amazing how Banu Israel, the people who were, who were the children of Jacob, the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, they were instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their messenger to do certain things. And from among the things they had to worship Allah alone, protect themselves from worshipping the calf and so many other things. And uh, there came a time when the repentance and the words of repentance came out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this repentance made by the people of Banu Israel. They 
these people use the same words used by Adam alayhi salam. He says, Oh Allah, or they, they said, uh, Oh Allah, if you do not have mercy on us and you do not forgive us, we will be from among the losers. If you do not uh, have mercy on us and if you do not forgive us, we will definitely be from among the losers. The true loss is when you have not achieved the forgiveness of Allah. That is the true loss. Everything else is temporary. But the forgiveness of Allah is something we are going to need for eternity. And therefore, it's an absolutely important dua that we should be making. And this is why uh, when the magicians who were told by the Pharaoh that they're about to be executed because they followed Musa alayhi salam or Moses may peace be upon him and they did not stick with the Pharaoh. He threatened them, he warned them, he told them I'm going to penalize you. He ended up punishing them, he ended up fulfilling what he did say. But what did they say? They were about to be executed. They made a beautiful dua. They, says, they said, رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَتَوَفَّنَا مُسْلِمِينَ Amazing. These magicians, they made a prostration to Allah. The Pharaoh tells them, well, I'm going to execute you. They say, look, we still believe in Allah. It's not going to change us. We know magic. We know what it's all about. What this man's come with is not magic. It is actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they say, oh, our Rabb, pour upon us patience and grant us death with the submitters, with the Muslimin. Grant us death with the submitters and even resurrect us with the submitters, subhanAllah. So... Imagine these people are about to be executed and they are saying, Oh Allah, let us have patience. Oh Allah, pour patience upon us. And they were not strong. You know, they were not Muslims for a long period of time. They were new Muslims. They were literally what we would term reverts. Reverted moments ago. And the Pharaoh is threatening them, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to execute you. They say, Well, whatever you're going to do is temporary. We're not giving up. And then they said, Oh Allah, pour on us patience. We desperately need the patience, the perseverance, the strength right now. Rabbana afrigh alayna sabran wa tawaffana muslimin. This for me is huge inspiration. Huge inspiration. You know, people who want to do the right thing, whether it is uh, deciding to dress more appropriately, whether it is deciding to fulfill your salah from today onwards, whether it is deciding to uh, engage in the obedience of Allah, not uh, doing anything haram anymore, uh, quitting, for example, bad habits, whether it's clubbing, whether it's gambling, whether it's uh, intoxicants, whether it's some form of abomination. Uh, when we decide to give up, a lot of the times we get pressure. From who? The pharaohs around us. They threaten us in different ways, sometimes our own parents. Sometimes our family members, they become pharaohs, pharaohs around us. And they tend to put pressure on us to go back to our old ways and go further away from Allah. These reverts who were brand new Muslims, Allah loved them so much that he mentioned their story in the Quran in many places. Imagine, if Allah had to mention your name, my name once, I think it would be, that's it, you know. So for Allah to mention their story in such a positive light, it's definitely a sign of the love of Allah because they endured for the sake of Allah. What are you going to endure for the sake of Allah? Yes, we talk about supplications, but that supplication needs to be realistic. Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me the strength. Oh Allah, grant me the strength. And you need to be serious about it and you need to want it. Many of us say, oh Allah, give me sabr, but we're not really looking for that sabr. May Allah make us from among those who are genuine and sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those whom whenever we call out to him, he listens. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.